Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the We Knives Special Edition or Limited Edition Makani uh, with some really cool uh, details on the pocket clip and backspacer. There's actually a few different versions of this knife, and I will link it right down below so that you guys can check it out. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to We Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. This is actually a special edition knife. It will come with a certificate of authenticity. Uh, it looks like uh, there were 300 of these made, um, and uh, they are they are made out of uh, the, the premium materials. They've got a little bit more spice than what you would generally see from uh, a Wii knife. Um, so that's cool. We'll talk all about that. Let's go ahead and uh, get a measurement of this knife. Overall length of the Makani, and I'm almost certain that I am mispronouncing that, so sorry about that. Uh, coming in at eight and a quarter. Uh, uh, blade length is actually a little bit over three and a half inches and your cutting edge is about 3.3. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario. Come on now. I put these grid lines on my camera for a reason. I'm not even using them. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. As you can see here, it's absolutely a full-size knife or what I would call a full-size knife. Let's put it up against the Demco AD 20.5. Fantastic. Let's put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Once again, closer to the size of the PM2. And last but certainly not least, I know you guys just mouth this with me or say it along in your head. The Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the, where is it? The Benchmade Bug Out. Definitely closer to the Ritter Hogue. How is the action? Let me, let me, let me say this. Uh, I get a lot of knives from Wii. A lot of their knives in the past have come a little tight from the factory. Here lately, maybe they've backed that off, or maybe they have changed something about how they do the internals. But we knives have been coming, their detent has always been great, but they've been coming a little bit smoother from the factory. And this is the case with this one. I don't think it's just because it's a special edition, but it takes just a little bit of encouragement to get it to drop into the closed position, which tells me that after a short period of time of sitting on the couch and playing with it while you watch Yellowstone, uh, it will probably drop shut. A, a drop of 10 weight nano oil or KPL, which I have down in the description of this video, will speed that process up. But the action's very good. It's uh, easy to access the lock bar because it's been carved, um, well, the show side scale has been carved a little lower than the lock bar, which is nice. Uh, close to double clutch, but it does clear it. And I'm sorry, I was I was like, where's the ramp? <laughs> there is no double clutch. It's way back here. This is literally the point right here where the detent ball is passing up on the uh, face of the blade. That's very early, but that's nice. They cleared that. They, whoever designed this knows, like, eh, people don't like that double clutch thing. So that's nice. It clears it, right? And that flipper tab is the, the curvature of it means that it's not uncomfortable uh, in the, the standard grip. We'll talk about that more later. You can also use this fuller here. That was a terrible one. Sorry about that. You can use the fuller to reverse flick it. Uh, the detent is strong enough to make that work, and the fuller is elongated enough that you can kind of choose where you want to do it, and there's plenty of access to it, so that's nice. Um, the flipping action is good. You can push button it, or you can light switch it. It's pretty much what we expect. Terry Profile, up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's actually fairly thin. That's nice. Length and height, up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here that this really isn't going to be a super difficult object to carry. It's a little bit longer than the Para 3, definitely shorter than the PM2. Nowhere near as tall. Well, I guess it's approaching, right, including the flipper tab. But still, eh, that hump is cleared pretty readily by the Para 3. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I believe this is a pretty, I think maybe that's an optical illusion. I bet it'll still come in at about 100 and... <laughs> Why turn into Bugs Bunny when I'm considering something? Um, let's get let's grab it all the way down here. Do it, yeah, hundred and twenty five thousandths. It looks really thin, but that's because of that aggressive swedge right there that kind of thins up the spine. 
So, anyways, materials. What are we looking at here? We have, if we can zoom in, a CPM 20 CV. This is 52 of 300. Then we have titanium. And this looks like Timascus, but it's that plasma anno. I know there's actually a better word for it. The pocket clip is exceptionally beautiful. This is a really nice milled clip, and it should be pointed out. Um, but this extra work in the backspacer and pocket clip it certainly does, you know, it helps out a little bit, at least psychologically, with that price tag, which is very high. Um, but uh, yeah, there's some uh, there's some nice materials here for sure. Let's take a look at the inside. It has been milled a little bit for weight reduction, so that's nice. Weight on the Makani coming in at 4.2 ounces. Um, not bad. Not a perfect um, ratio, but not bad at all. It's actually still lighter than the Ritter Hogue, uh, and the Ritter Hogue is G10 and steel, and the balance on it is pretty good. It's right there in that initial you know position for your or that initial space for your index finger so that's great it really feels pretty good let's go ahead and do a hardware check i'll get out my tools as per usual my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable you can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools i use on this channel we'll grab a t8 because i'm pretty sure that's what we likes to use t8 for the pivot and t8 for the body screws and then we have a hidden screw underneath here which i think is probably a bit smaller Take a look. I don't know if you guys can see in there. I'm gonna go ahead and look. Yeah, those appear to be a little bit smaller. Probably T6 for those hidden pocket clip screws. And then T8 also for the lock bar screw. They have hidden the screws on this side, which is a nice touch. It also minimizes the amount of hardware um, for the for, for uh, deconstruct or, or disassembly. Um, so that's great. Real nice touch there. Uh, no issues. I'm, I'm very happy with that. All right, meat and potatoes time. Overall, the especially the front aesthetic of this, and I'll, I'll say this, there's a version of this knife for 20 bucks more than the base. This is like the base version. For 20 bucks more, you can get an inlay that is a piece of titanium that is anodized exactly the same as this, and that is far and away the best looking version. When I looked, I'm pretty sure it said sold out, so I'm thinking most people kind of thought the same thing. That was the best value uh, version. For all of these, they should have done different inlays for all of them. You know, if you're gonna, if the price is gonna be that high, go ahead and do a special inlay that is something unique for every single one. The plain, this front aesthetic, this is indistinguishable from a sea of Wii knives that look exactly the same. The only way that you can, oh, oh, wait, okay, there is a little bit of zazz here. There is a little bit of chili powder here, right? The only reason, the only way you're gonna know is if you flip it over, right? Um, so this side is pretty freaking boring. It's contoured, there's some chamfering, right? a little bit of character here. Mainly, I'll say it's very comfortable. And this, I, it's like an alien stiletto. Like, it's like fancy dress shoes for a female alien. <laughs> it's what it makes me think, I don't know. But it is easy on the hand. This is a very comfortable knife and extremely chunked, uh, chunkable, comfortable. <laughs> what is wrong with my brain? Uh, very comfortable choked up. No jumping back here, but that's okay. It doesn't need it, right? Um, in terms of utility, the blade will do very well. It actually gets reasonably thin behind this edge. Sharpened very well. No surprise there. Nice tip. Uh, perfect uh, machining on the blade. Um, you know, the, the the bummer is, is I know what we likes to uh, harden their, their 20CV to. It's generally... 59 to 61 and that unfortunately drops another point when they do this coating so it's 58 to 60 which is mostly unacceptable um for 20 cv 20 cv even when we're talking about commercial you know on these products these mass produced even though this is a special edition it's still the same 20 cv that you see on their mass produced knives uh 60 to 62 right some special measures should be taken for the ones that are coded to, to ensure that they are also hitting those hardness numbers. Um, but I do not like CPM 20 CV slash M390 slash 204P. Yes, those are all the same composition. If you didn't know, they're just made by different companies. Bowler makes M390, Carpenter makes 204P, and Crucible makes 20 CV. But it is essentially, aside from a slight variation in uh, a silicon, it is essentially the exact same composition. Um, 60 to 62. 60 is acceptable. 61 is good. 62 is great, right? That's where we want it to be. There is an exponential difference. It is not a static, you know, there's an exponential difference with each additional point on the Rockwall scale. 
So dropping from 60 to 59 is a big step. I'm going to keep saying these, this in these reviews uh, because that, and that is my opinion. But I should say that I am uh, not a metallurgist. I do not make knives. I have no hand in manufacturing. I have no idea. I'm just a guy yelling at a rectangle, you know, on a Home Depot table in his basement. Um, so yeah, take that for what it's worth. But I think it should be higher. The geometry is good, though. The blade profile is good. Those elements will assist in, uh, you know, making sure that this knife does what it is supposed to do. And it will do that. It will. It just won't, you know, for the most part, it's, it's probably not going to perform where some people want it to perform, right? If it doesn't matter to you, then it doesn't matter. But for a lot of people, it's going to matter. So, anyways. Uh, the rest of the knife, I mean, it's it's pretty plain. There's not really much to say here. The backspacer, they did put the lanyard hole in the backspacer. The backspacer looks beautiful. I love that that anno, right? This is not Timascus. It is not layered titanium Damascus. It's just a surface anno that looks really, really nice. And it does. I like that. The pocket clip is absolutely the highlight of this knife. That is gorgeous. <laughs> Man, it just feels like this in combination with some other elements that would help to, you know, accentuate these little areas. It, it really could have, if they had done the inlays, like this exact knife with the inlay, like an inlay that looked just like this, it would have just really spiced up the front of it, right? Um, but, but they didn't, so. But the pocket clip is great. And on top of that, it's also functional, right? I like that it's, uh, you know, carries at a medium depth. It's nice and smooth, very, very nice machining. Polished as well. And then there's a nice rise. And honestly, in and out of the pocket, it's very easy. Uh, there is a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. They also did the pivot collar with this uh, plasma anno, and then they polished it. Um, so yeah, lock up right there coming in at something like 50%. No lock stick. Like I said, no double clutch. No blade play up, down, left, or right. The stop pin is actually internal and attached to the blade, so running on channels on either side of the titanium scales. That's nice. No pivot lash, consistent smooth action in here, a nice clicky detent. Perfect centering, no detent lash. Not a super complicated review here. This knife comes in, the starting price I believe is somewhere around, it's like right at $300, perhaps slightly less for the base models. Um, eh, if you're going to do that, if you're going to charge us 300 bucks for a knife, there has to be some more. Getting the heat treat better, I think is that's something that should happen, period, across the board, right? Getting the heat treat better. Or use a different steel, right? Um, but uh, if you're going to charge us $300, because these knives are manufactured in China, we does a great job. They're some of the best, uh, some of the highest quality manufacturing on earth. Um, that's great. But the cost of this versus what they're charging us is, uh, you got we, we got to be getting a little bit more. We need more, more stuff if you're going to charge us that much. Um, this is cool. I think it's overpriced. It's just another, it's another situation where the knife is just too expensive. Um, I think that there are plenty of options out there providing the exact same materials with the same, if not more detail, more complexity, more enthusiast oomph, right? More chili powder um, for substantially less. I mean, and substantially less, right? So it's neat. If you like it, go for it. I would recommend that you look around. That is my honest review of this knife. Cool, but not $300 cool. So that's going to be about it, guys. Short and sweet today. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.